like fantasy You like football So come check out something neato It's the Fantasy Football Burrito Welcome everybody to another episode of the Fantasy Football Burrito I am your host, Dirt Shingleberry And joining me is a man that always goes for guts over glory Scott Zipperman How you doing today, Zip the Skip? Oh, uh, he's doing great. Uh, the gut is full and ready. It's going to be a good day on Fantasy Football Burrito. We have a great show lined up for you guys today. We are going to go over some NFL news. We got some notes around, some players re-signed. Um, we are going to go over our sleepers and our busts. We have two players from each position for the sleepers and one player for a bust that we're going to talk a little bit about. Um, I'm very excited. Are you excited? How'd your list go? Oh, you know, my list went great. It was fun looking around and seeing who who's uh, sleeping and who's going to take a big turd. I had a blast. It was a bit difficult, but uh, uh, I think we're going to have some good times. All right. So let's just uh, start off. So I want to know, uh, how was your week? I haven't, you know, haven't talked to you in a while. How was your week? What was my week? Um, lots I hear of you played a very exciting game. A space game. Yeah. A bunch of me and the boys, we got together and played some Twilight Imperium. Took us about five hours. We never finished it, uh, but we had a good time. I am who, tired, though. Who was winning? Uh, well, we had two Chris's over, and they were both winning. So the two Chris's were winning. Good double okay. Chris win. Double Chris. All right. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into the news. Um, probably the biggest piece of news that we're going to be talking about is this week. I believe on Monday, the rookies are set to report to training camp. And throughout the rest of the week, the veterans will join in. Um, you know, if... All looks right. We should be getting football on time, hopefully, as long as the players will agree. We need the players union in the NFL to come to an agreement. But as for right now, they need to report. That's true. I did see on Twitter today a lot of top players were all pretty much saying the same thing. Uh, just talking about how they're concerned about player safety and they've got, you know, wives and kids at home. and They want to know that they're safe. And so we could be heading towards something. Yeah, you know, stand, stand off. there needs to be some sort of agreement between the Players Association and the NFL. Um, from what I've been hearing, the NFL needs to get better, uh, like, regulations and um, rules and just stuff in place for the players to feel safe. But, you know, I'm yeah. being I'm being hopeful. I'm, I'm still optimistic about it. For sure. And that seems to be the biggest issue is that they... The NFL has had the, 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 the luxury of time, you know, because they had, you know, there's, this happened when what, like January, you know, so they have eight months to figure things out. And I, it doesn't sound like there was much figured out. And I think that's what the players were mostly mad about. Um, again, uh, I'm hopeful too for football. I want football, but I will always side with the players. Yeah, I'll always side on the side of caution and safety as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, another big piece of news is uh, the Titans get their man. Um, Derrick Henry agrees to, I believe, a four-year, $50 million contract with the Titans. Um, you know, money that you don't usually see get thrown around at a running back unless your name is Christian McCaffrey or Ezekiel Elliott. So that's, you know, exciting that their main man is going to be staying uh, with them. You know, their, their lead dog, their, whore, their workhorse. Yep, and he's going to get those 40 catches and get me a solid hamburger. <laughs> A burger bet, yeah. um, you know, and then some defensive news. The Chiefs agreed with their their uh, star defensive tackle, Chris Jones, which, you know, Brett Veach is one of the better GMs I've seen. He drafts well. He gets his players locked down. And between getting Tyron Matthew, Chris Jones, Frank Clark, and Patrick Mahomes under contract for a while, are we looking at another dynasty with the Chiefs? I think it's very possible. Um who, out of curiosity, how, how long has he been GM of the Chiefs? Uh, I want to say that his year of drafting Mahomes might have been his first or second year. Oh, wow. So, yeah, he came in and possibly switched the whole game up. Yeah, no, Brett Veach has been fantastic as the uh, GM there. Um, you know, last year they, they made a trade for Frank Clark from Seattle and signed him long term. And then they franchise tag Chris Jones and it looked like he, you know, he wasn't going to sign. He was going to be gone for a while. And then next thing you know, he gets his deal. Um, a lot of people were speculating that Chris Jones was going to get traded and and have, you know, do a sign and trade kind of like what the Seahawks did with Frank Clark. But, you know, they managed to to get him. Yeah, he's, he's, he's figured something out down there in Kansas City. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Um, yeah, 2017 was his first year as full-time GM, and that was the year they took Patrick Mahomes uh, in the first round. Well, damn. That's a that's the way to start off a dynasty. Oh, yeah. Your first, uh, first first-round pick ends up being an MVP and uh, the best quarterback we've seen in a long time. Yep. Um, then another defensive news, Miles Garrett signs a huge deal with the Browns. I believe it was over a hundred million dollars. Um, and you know, whenever he's on the field and not hitting people with the helmet, he's one of the most <laughs> dominant pass rushers in the NFL as well. Yep. Uh, I, I did not see this one coming. This one kind of shocked me. You didn't think they were going to resign him? I didn't know. I just didn't really, uh, expect anything so soon, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I, uh, I always expected them to re-sign him because he's one of the most dominant. You don't want to let him hit the open market. He was the number one pick, and you know, whenever he was, he was drafted. His contract was five years, one hundred twenty-five million. Okay, yeah. So Where huge on deal that? on that one. Yeah, is is that is that high end defensive end money? Is that top? Yeah, I think that makes him like the highest paid defensive end. It makes him the highest paid non quarterback in football. Well, that is solid. Good for him. so yeah. Absolutely. Um, and then the saga we've been watching for quite some time, Dak Prescott could not get a deal done with the Cowboys. They waited until the last second and started negotiating. They finally were coming to agreement and they couldn't get it done before the deadline. So he, he's, I mean, he's what's his, what's his future now? I, you know, I would honestly think that since they made that big push, I would be surprised if he doesn't get, you know, he's probably going to get more money now than what they were about to agree on because he's going to play another year and he's going to play on the franchise tag. So whatever they just agreed on before, you know, the deadline passed is probably going to be the starting point for where they negotiate at the end of the year. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, you know, talking about uh, someone who had nothing but time, the Cowboys had nothing but time to sign Dak Prescott. And they, how, how do you wait to tell the very last minute to get a deal done with your franchise quarterback? I just don't understand that. I don't, I don't either. I mean, it's got to, they got to be in a tough position with the whole Patrick Mahomes deal now too. That, oh yeah. That definitely complicates it. Yeah, seriously, you think that they would have been sending multiple deals by then. But, yeah, it's very interesting. Well, all right. So that's, I mean, we didn't, like I said, we didn't have a lot of news this week. We were just going to, you know, hit on the top top things that happened throughout the last week of football. The big one, like I said, training camp supposed to be starting up this week, and we're really rooting for that. So we're going to go ahead and take a little break now, and then we're going to see who's sleeping and who's busting. As it- it's the fantasy football. All right, welcome back, everybody. So now this is going to be the sleepers and bust segment. Uh, we each have two players from each position for our sleepers. We each have one bust from the position. Uh, we're just going to get right into it and start talking about it. I'm going to start off with the quarterback position, and my first sleeper is Gardner Minshew. As I started doing my research for Gardner Minshew as a as a sleeper, I started talking myself into him more and more. Um, he's going in the 18th round, which if you're in redraft, our league only drafts till round 15. So you could get them basically for free. Last pick, you could drop somebody after the draft and pick them up. And I'm a firm believer in waiting on your quarterback. Last year, he only started 12 games and he threw for 3,200 yards, 21 touchdowns and six interceptions. And one factor that he has that most people don't, don't like think about is he runs the ball too. He had 344 yards of rushing. So, I mean... A full season of starting, he doesn't have that competition with, you know, they just signed Nick Foles to big money and they need to start him over Minshew. He's the clear-cut starter. His backup's Mike Glennon, and I don't see that being an issue uh, except for injury. They just signed Jay Gruden as their offensive coordinator, and if you guys remember, Andy Dalton had his best years under Jay Gruden. One year he threw for 33 uh, touchdowns. Another year he threw for over 4,000 yards. If he could, if Jake Rudin can make Andy Dalton look good, you know, he gets somebody like Gordon Minshew, I could see similar numbers. And the only reason why I say that is because Minch, the Jaguars offense already has DJ Shark, DD Westbrook, and Keelan Cole. And they get, went out and added LaVisca Chenault from Colorado, who's just a just a great dynamic football player. And you want to see him get the, the ball in his hands more. And they signed Tyler Eifert, who's a dominant tight end when healthy. So you hope that he's healthy and he's reunited with Jay Gruden. Gardner Minshew is a sleeper who's really low risk and really high reward, in my opinion. I 100% agree with that. 
High risk, high reward. Low risk, high reward. No, I believe in what I said. <laughs> uh, beautiful sleeper, man. I love it. Uh, 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 let's see. Oh, it's my turn for a sleeper. Yeah, let's get one of your sleepers. I'm going to also start with quarterbacks. My first sleeper is Ryan Tannehill for the Tennessee Titans. Quarterback. And I know that you're pretty low on Mr. Tannehill. Yes. And uh, that's kind of why I started – that's why I put him as a sleeper was to counter that. I wanted to just uh, agitate you. Um, <laughs> but then I ended up looking at his stats and stuff and realized, no, he is a solid sleeper. Uh, he's He's got – he knows the team wants him. He played solid in the second half. Like, look at these stats. His last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten games, okay? 19 points. I'm going to round up and stuff. Uh, 20 points. 23 19, 32, 14, 28, 24, 24, 18. I'd be fine with that from any my quarterback for the last 10 games. Like, that's solid. That- um, yeah, I've always just kind of looked at Ryan Tannehill, at least uh, early on in his career. I, I was one of those people that was a big believer in him, you know, whenever he was getting the starting job in Miami and – it looked like he would put it together and then get injured. You know, yeah. he did that a couple years in a row. But the the Ryan Tannehill we saw in Tennessee was more of a game manager tight end or tight end uh, Tannehill. He was more of a uh, he was more of a Kyle Orton to me than he was Ooh, anything else. He was somebody he was somebody who you know he's going to go out there and probably not win you the game. Or not lose you the game, but he's not going to win you the game. You know, he's he's just taking care of the football, which is you want from your you know if you're a Titans fan, but you don't want that on my I don't I don't want that on my fantasy team. I want somebody who's going to win me a week. Which the weeks that he did have over twenty points, yeah, starting Ryan Tannehill and he scores you twenty eight points. I think you said one week. Yeah, he did, he That's probably twenty four a couple times, twenty seven once, thirty two. Yeah. So he has the highest thirty two and the low is thirteen, which is pretty. That's not what you want at all, but. Yeah, I mean, what's his ADP? Did you write that down? No, I don't do ADP. <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> well, I mean, probably where you're getting Tannehill, it is low risk. I'm assuming that you're taking him either as your backup quarterback or if you go no quarterback and take him and like take one like round 13 or 14, then, right, you know, your ADP is 148.5. Okay. What does that mean? <laughs> that's giving you the overall pick instead of a. Um, the round. Uh, yes. No, I, I'm suggesting Ryan Tannehill as a sleeper to be your full-time starter. Uh, one of those classic plug-and-play forgets. <laughs> See, and you would you know, a plug-and-play forget to me would be like a like a Patrick Mahomes or a Lamar Jackson, not a Ryan Tannehill. Now you got to think about those players, about whether or not they're going to score 30 or 50 points. With Tannehill... You'll know you get a respectable number. Um, all right, so my next quarterback sleeper is actually Joe Burrow. Um, you know, Joe Burrow, his college, he put up one of the best, if not the best, college football quarterback seasons we've ever seen uh, in in the modern era. He threw for over 5,000 yards. Um, he had 60 touchdown passes, only six interceptions. So last year with that LSU offense, he didn't turn the ball over either. He also ran another five touchdowns. So I'm, I know this is college and the game doesn't always translate as well to quarterbacks, but he, he scored 65 touchdowns last year. Um, coming into the Cincinnati offense, they have Tyler Boyd, A.J. Green. They drafted T. Higgins. They have Joe Mixon to run. And that O-line should be improved with Jonah Williams coming back. Maybe Zach Taylor's offense, maybe uh, – me, Joe Burrow is what they needed to get it running because obviously Andy Dalton wasn't the answer. So I would take my chance with Joe Burrow at twelve at round twelve pick seven. Oh yeah, Joe Burrow. I I, I end with him in most of my mock drafts just because why not? It seems fun. Uh, my my quarterback, my my second sleeper is Mr. Teddy Bridgewater. Mr. Bridgewater for the Carolina Panthers. Uh, we know we know that Bridgewater is a safe man. He's not going to risk it too much. He's gonna. He's more of a game manager type too, compared to you know, like 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 Tannehill. Um, but he is consistent. I feel in his uh, ability and just the fact that he's on that Carolina offense with CMC makes me excited. I mean, he could just dump it off to him a couple times and score three touchdowns. You know, and 
I mean, why wouldn't you want that? You know, sometimes you just want you want safe stability in your quarterback position. That way you can yeah, focus I, on other stuff later, earlier in the draft and whatnot. Yeah, I like Teddy Bridgewater with that Carolina offense. Matt Rule yeah. was a good offensive coach in uh, at Baylor. Um, like you said, CMC, they have DJ Moore. They added Robbie Anderson. Um, their tight end position might be a little questionable because I don't think they added one, and so they're just kind of rolling with Ian Thomas. Ooh, yeah, Ian Thomas. <laughs> you going to rethink your tight end sleeper now? I might, yeah. I forgot all about him, and that's perfect. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I do like Teddy Bridgewater. I actually, in our 16-team dynasty, he's actually my uh, starting quarterback right now. Yeah, and I would feel so, confident with that. I mean, like, sometimes what, you know, like the, the stats that Tannehill had that I mentioned, that's like – what I kind of want from a quarterback. Someone who can consistently, you know, most likely get me around 18 points, but has the potential for 32 points, you know. And it's not a Lamar Jackson or Patrick Mahomes, but it's serviceable. And sometimes that's all you need from the quarterback position. Yeah, pretty much for me, what I want from a quarterback, uh, especially since I, I don't believe in drafting um, tan, uh, Mahomes or, or Lamar early, um, I usually wait to see if one of those top 10, top 12 quarterbacks that we listed, you know, on our previous shows fall to me later in the draft, because that's usually the way I approach drafts is I tier tier base it. I'll, I'll look at my rankings and I'll draw a line and say, these are my tier ones. I want as many players from this as I can. These are my tiers twos, you know, and stuff like that. So, and I usually do the same thing with quarterback and I draw a line on the last quarterback that I want as my starter. And whenever the one, the run goes and they start dropping off the night, that's whenever I'm like, okay, maybe I should take one here in round ten, round eleven. You know, yeah. You let the draft dictate when you take one. You, you never yeah. take one out of like, uh, as an early pick or something. Yeah, which I mean, and I also want to put this out there: if you're gonna have more fun in your fantasy leagues with Patrick Mahomes, and the way you're gonna do that is reach for him, if that's how you guys want to play, then play that way. But personally. You know, if you want my advice, that's not how I'm doing it. Yeah. Well, um, yeah but ultimately play the way that makes it fun for you. Exactly. But yeah, 15 points from a quarterback is about where I, what I want the baseline to be. I don't want anything really lower than that. But that's that's what I want the floor to be is 15 points a game. Yes, and that's I, that's like if we average this out, which I maybe should have done, it would have been <laughs> around that number. Yep. All right, so now I'm like, we're going to go into running back sleepers, and my first running back sleeper that I think everybody was high on last year, and then it just completely fell off this year, is David Montgomery. Yeah, for sure. I believe I took him last year in our fantasy draft. I had the number one pick overall. I didn't take him there. I took uh, I, I took him on my turn, so I think I either took him in the second or the third round, but and he did not play as good as he was going last year. So he might've, you know, been bus candidate, but this year, I think that we're going to be seeing bigger things. He's not going to get drafted as high. His ADP is in the four, middle of the fourth round. Uh, last year he had 800 yards and six touchdowns. He caught 25 passes out of the backfield, but that's mainly because Tariq Cohen's there. And you know, that guy, it does amazing things out of the backfield, but you have two good offensive minded coaches with uh, Matt Nagy and Bill Lazor. Um, they have, they're going to have better QB play out of Foles, is my guess. Um, I don't think Foles is going to start the season as a quarterback. I think about week three he's going to be the quarterback. But Bill Lazor, he spent some time as the Miami offense coordinator where the team wasn't great, but the running backs were serviceable. He had Lamar Miller, Damian Williams, and Jay Ajayi all in separate times, and all three of those guys were good. And he was the one that had Joe Mixon you know, his first couple of years in the league. So he's worked with some good running backs, and I think David Montgomery is a good running back for the Chicago Bears, and he's one of my sleepers. You know, Go out and get him as your uh, second running back. Go and get him as your flex running back. I wouldn't feel bad about that. No, that's true. I, I love um, – I, I, I love – I'm attracted to players that everyone seems to have forgotten about, um, and uh, that, that falls under David Montgomery. Um, I think he's primed to – catch some people off guard this season yeah solid sleeper um so I, let me ask you this my my two running back sleepers they're on my sleeper list almost for the same exact reason how do you feel okay. should i just give them both what do you think 
Yeah, we can talk about both of them. Okay, and then we can just go back to your last one. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so for uh, my two running back sleepers, it's uh, Marlon Mack and uh, Philip Lindsay. And okay. they're both because they have, uh, with Mack, uh, I'm hoping that Jonathan Taylor comes in, kind of takes over the uh, the three down lead back with Marlon Mack becoming like a Eckler type with uh, Philip Rivers. Which could okay. open up a lot. I think that his game fits more for that kind of style, anyways. Same with Philip Lindsay, who we've already both of these players have shown potential, but they're, they just don't seem to be able to do it on a third down back kind of basis. But um, I'm hoping with their transition to, for sure, what I'm thinking will be the number two back. You know, the 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 third down back, maybe the relief. I'm hoping for some some big things from them. They got solid offenses down there with solid coaches, and this they could just be exciting backs to take to have as your in your in your backup pool. Yeah, um, I'm gonna touch on Marlon Mack first, but um, I do like Marlon Mack. I really do. I think that this year and possibly next year he will be fine. I need to. I don't remember how long he's under contract for, but this first year, for sure, he, they're gonna be a split backfield. Jonathan Taylor is gonna go higher in fantasy drafts. But I think that they're going to end the year unless an injury happens or unless one of them just shows that they're way better than the other. Yes. Um, they're going to end with similar statistics. Marlon Mack is a great, not great, but he's a good running back. He's a, he's a solid starting running back and for fantasy purposes. Um, so if you're in a dynasty format, then, yeah, I'd be trying to move Marlon Mack probably or trying to get my hands on Taylor uh, to lock down that backfield. But for a... For redraft this year, at least, I think Marlon Mack is fine. Yeah. Um, Philip Lindsay, I think he's going to be the Austin Eckler to Melvin Gordon. I think he, you know, he can catch the ball in the backfield. He runs great in space. He runs pretty good in between the tackles. He's a little smaller, but he's he's a fine running back. And yeah, he did I, good when he was starting. Yeah, and you know, he's the out of the three backs in that backfield because they also have Royce Freeman. He's the one that actually has a role out of those three. Yeah. Um, him and Melvin Gordon. So, yeah, that that's a fine sleeper as well. I wouldn't mind having him as a backup. You know, somebody goes down or I need a flex on a bye week. I'd, I would feel fine starting Philip Lindsay. Yep, that's how I feel too. Um, my next running back sleeper is a little bit of a deeper sleeper. Um, but it's Duke Johnson for Houston. He's going in round 11. Last year, he had, even with Carlos Hyde rushing for 1,000 yards, he ran for 400 yards with two touchdowns. He caught for 400 yards and three touchdowns. His pass-catching ability is top tier in the NFL, you know, once he gets the ball in the space. And what people don't realize is he is a good running back. He is – did you know that he's the rush, uh, career rushing yard leader at the University of Miami? I had no idea. Did you know that he ran for the second most running uh, r- rushing yards in a single season at Miami with 1600. No, I didn't know that either. Yeah. And you know, they added David Johnson. Sure. But David Johnson's had two, three years of just injuries. And if they're getting the David Johnson of last year, who couldn't hit a hole that his, his offensive line was opening up for him, then I would see Duke Johnson going in there more sooner than later. Yeah. I like that pick. I mean, I, yeah. I'm also um, intrigued by David Johnson, uh, but Duke Johnson is just equally as enticing too. Someone will take over that running back situation if they don't. Exactly, that. exactly. And you know where they're going. Duke Johnson is going in the eleventh round, and I think David Johnson's going around the third or the fourth. I'd rather take my chance on Duke. Mm-hmm. Okay, I love it. That is a solid sleep. All right, so uh, I believe me and you have one of the same. Uh, running back sli- or wide receiver sleepers. So do you just want to talk about that one together? Running back sleeper? Oh, oh rush. Oh, uh, yes. What about? Do you want to do the bust for running backs, or do we do bust at the end? We'll do bust at the end. Ah, uh, yes. I didn't even realize we didn't do the quarterback bust. Okay, um. Let's continue. So, our wide receiver sleeper that me and you both share is Darius Slayton. Oh yeah, we're big fans of uh, Darius Slayton. I have, um, he, he, he single handedly almost won me my uh, dynasty playoffs when I had no business being in the playoffs. Yeah, you fire sold your team for draft picks and and made it to the playoffs, and I think you got into the second round? Um, no, I, I got into the sixth seed, but I lost to the number two guy, but I almost beat him. That, and no one, I was projected to lose by like 50 points or something. 
Um, yeah, and I'm the one that actually traded you to, traded you him. So, oh, and after yeah. he started blowing up, I was like, oh, I should have never gotten rid of Darius Slayton. Yep. I mean, you should have because I love having him. But um, yeah, he's the, obviously the top dog in the, in the Giants. I feel. I mean, there's Sterling Shepard and stuff. Uh, who else is that? Uh, they. I mean, if you just think about the Giants' offense, they do have Saquon Barkley who catches passes. They have Sterling Shepard. They have Golden Tate and Evan Ingram. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can't double everybody, and I'm assuming that Saquon's going to get the most of the attention of the defenses. And Evan Ingram is a solid pass catcher as a tight end if he can stay healthy. Yeah, yeah. Slayton seems to be their deep threat guy, and him and Daniel Jones had something going last season. And you know, another a year of practice, another year in this offense. I mean, another year. Yeah. In the NFL. And the, well, they have a new offense. Remember that they have Jason Garrett now oh, with yeah. uh, Joe Judge. Second year with Daniel Jones. That's one of the points I wrote. You know, they obviously have a chemistry. And Darius Slayton came out of nowhere last year and he caught eight touchdowns. Yeah. You know, you that's probably where just trying to guess this for his second year. I would say that's probably the ceiling is eight touchdowns, but I wouldn't be surprised if he gets to 10. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, um, I mean, he was obviously inconsistent. His, his, but I'm going to chalk that up to rookie you know, just rookie issues. Yeah. And he's a second year receiver. And that's the year that they say that receivers usually break out a little bit is their second year. So yeah, I would expect to do it too. Yep. And he's only going in the ninth round. And if he catches 10 touchdowns, he's going to excel that ninth round rating. Yep. He's got the volume. I mean, what do you not, what, what's not to like with Darius Slayton? He is a, he, he probably won't end up, he will be beyond sleeper status by the time we draft, I bet. Probably, probably. He's, you know, once they hear we're putting them as a sleeper, people are going to start drafting him higher, right? Hell yeah. Heck yeah. Um, <laughs> All right. So my next wide receiver sleeper is uh, Michael Gallup from staying in the same division. Uh, he's he had a good, good uh, year last year with the Cowboys. He caught over a thousand yards and six touchdowns, which, you know, I was just saying with Slayton receivers usually take that leap in their second year in. Michael Gallup doubled his his production from his rookie year. His rookie year, he only caught 33 passes for 507 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, his sophomore year, he caught 60 passes with 1,100 yards and six touchdowns. He doubled his, his production. And what, what and, more can you ask for? <laughs> and that offense added C.D. Lamb. They still have Amari Cooper. And I think the kid out of Colorado State is going to just have a good year this year. He Mike McCarthy can stay, sustain – multiple fantasy relevant receivers. He did it in green Bay with Donald driver and Greg Jennings. He did it again with Jordy Nelson, Randall Cobb and James Jones. So his offense can sustain fantasy, multiple fantasy relevant, relevant receivers. Apparently I can't talk right now. Oh, you can, you talk wonderfully and and you also pick wonderful sleepers. Gallup is a, uh, yeah, yeah, he, he kind of exploded. He kind of made himself apparent last season. He was like, "Here I am, and here." Um, and it seems like maybe people have uh, it's he's drifted from the memory a bit. With, you know, some of the CD Lamb a- accusation uh, drafting, and um, don't forget about Michael Gallup though. No, no, no. no I th- I think he's going to benefit from Amari Cooper and CD Lamb being on the same offense. Hundred percent. I mean, everyone will ideally benefit from playing all together. I feel like. How do you? Yeah. How do you? defend against that team um this uh my other my 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 second wide receiver sleeper is a uh, christian kirk for the arizona cardinals and i mean we've seen his potential he's had a few 30 point games here and there i mean he had one last season he was wildly inconsistent he was injured for a bit um but he was kind of scoring all over the place but but i'm thinking i'm hoping that's just chalking up to you know maybe not being ideal as a number one wide receiver. And with the uh, Hopkins trade, he now is, you know, he's mixed up with uh, Hopkins and Fitzgerald. And I'm hoping that he can excel in that situation now where, where some attention will not be so directed towards him. And he can maybe produce more 20 point games or something. Maybe, maybe pull off a gallop of last season. Yeah. And, uh, why, why not? I mean, that offense is going to do stuff. I feel it's going to, it's going to be constantly making points and, and and just get get what you can. And Kirk has shown that he can pull off the big games. Yeah, I like Christian Kirk. Uh, that's one thing that whenever he was coming out is people saw him more of a number two receiver, not the lead guy. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And now he doesn't have to be the lead guy. I mean, DeAndre Hopkins is there. You still have Larry Fitzgerald. And, you know, if this offense moves the way people think it will, it should be good. I mean. Yeah. And, I mean, it moved last season, too. So It did. It did. The, uh, you just hope that, that DeAndre Hopkins can adjust okay, which he's a good enough receiver. He should be fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think he's going to uh, excel in this offense, I'm hoping. Anyways, it's going to be fun to watch. Um, okay, so my we're only going to do one tight end sleeper for you guys. Um, mine is Hayden Hurst. He's a former first round pick that was buried on the Ravens death chart. He now has the clear road to be the starter for the Falcons in that high powered offense that's all made of first rounders. You know that every single one of their projected starters was a former first round pick. I did not, but that's fun. Yeah, um, he's going in the seventh round and. Yeah, I mean, he has all the talent in the world. He's quick, if I remember correctly. He, he's a faster tight end. He can he can be a vertical threat, and he can block. And, yeah, he, he should be a good um, replacement for Austin Hooper. Uh, I wouldn't, wouldn't say that I expect him to put up the same production Hooper did right away, but, I mean, he should do something. Yeah, I mean, we all know uh, I'm a huge Hayden Hurst fan. I have number 12 on my tight end list. He's um, actually has probably risen a few spots on that list in my own mind. Uh, yeah, he's beyond a sleeper for me. He, he uh, He's uh, he's first round. Now he's in first round status. But he's, he, I mean, I've taken him many times with my tight end in many, many, many mocks. He, I'd be completely happy with him. That uh, Atlanta offense, I mean, if Hooper showed what a tight end can do in that. And, you know, if you believe Hayden Hurst can pull something off like similar to that, take him because that is exciting. I'm- Absolutely, Hayden Hurst. I wanted to uh, thank you for that sleeper pick. That was that was great. Um, you're you're welcome. I, I'm doing it for you. Hey, I, uh, I love you, buddy. Tight end for me. Uh, I originally was going to go with Gronk just to bug dirt, and sometimes <laughs> that's how I find my best moves is by what would irk dirt, and I call it that. I call it irking dirt. And but then throughout this whole bust and sleeper process i discovered ian thomas and i said why not that sounds exciting someone needs he's a tight end they haven't signed anyone he's young teddy bridgewater i could see trusting a tight end needing a tight end you know to get him out of jams why not ian thomas might do something and the fact that i forgot about him made him a perfect sleeper for me and i i'm gonna maybe seriously consider him in my future drafts yeah, I like uh, Ian Thomas just fine. Um, I actually had him in that dynasty league that we were just talking about, the 16 team, but I I uh, traded him for, I don't remember, I, I think he was part of a deal that got me a first round pick for next year. Um, and you're right, they haven't signed anybody. I'm going to double check that, just make sure we're not lying. Please, but uh, yeah, he, he showed promise last year. He didn't do quite as good as a uh, you know, people were hoping, you know, Greg Olson goes down and this young kid should be able to step right in and do the same thing. And that's just, you know, as as that's what it sounds like on paper. That's just not always what it does. But now you have a new, whole new offense coming in, a new quarterback. And, you know, assuming that we are correct whenever we say that we he, they haven't signed anybody yet, then that obviously shows that the coaching staff has belief in him and has confidence in him. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I like Ian Thomas. Yep, he's the... The projected starter for for their tight end and see i mean that's all i mean that's target target the the starter of any offense and you're probably it's a solid move <laughs> yeah um, i mean there's nothing wrong with that especially because i bet you ian thomas probably isn't even going drafted in in most leagues or at least high right yeah I was um, points just now and yeah his highest scored game is 17 so not anything spectacular but it, well, 17 you know, from tight end is fine. Exactly. If he can get that consistency going, 16, 17 points, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm happy with that. If he can get that 16, 17 consistently, he's going to be in talked about like uh, like Greg, George Kittle and uh, and Zach Ertz and Yo, yeah, Travis Kelsey. You know? Honestly, tight ends have been such a hit or miss that I'm happy with 10 points from a tight end. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it got to a point last year whenever my tight end would go down, I'd be happy with 7.6 because that means that he caught a five or caught a one yard touchdown. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, until I, until Jared Cook last year kind of blew up, I had, that was a headache every, every week. 
Um, all right, so we're gonna. This is probably where we're gonna be arguing a little bit more because I know that at least a couple of my picks are not. You're not a big fan of some of them, but um, we're gonna be talking about the bust guys. Oh, and yes. we'll see what I feel. So my quarterback that could bust this year, which I know it's gonna contradict because I did rank him decently high in my top twelve quarterbacks, um, is Kyler Murray. Oh, you are crazy! I love a crazy person. Well, you know. I feel like we're reliving history here with a rookie of the year quarterback or a quarterback that did good his rookie year. His offense goes out and gets some, some new weapons for him. And then they just don't produce. And if it sounds like we're reliving history, it's because that's exactly what the Browns just did the year before with Baker Mayfield and getting him Odell Beckham, you know, Kyler Murray. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes into a sophomore slump. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, the defense has more another year of tape on them. You know, they didn't really know what they were doing. A lot of these young quarterbacks the first year, they do pretty well because NFL defenses and coaches don't don't see them as much. And now they have a full season of tape on them. And I just I'm not I mean, my reason why he's on the bus for me is because he's going in the fifth round. And, you know, if I want to take a quarterback in the fifth round, I'm expecting him to finish like right around like around there or higher. And I think that that's a ceiling, you know, you're drafting him at a ceiling whenever you could get a different running back or wide receiver that could produce higher. When you, if you're drafting a QB in the fifth round, which we know you won't do, but if you ever did it, you're saying you want something that feels concrete. Um, yes. Like if I'm drafting a quarterback in the fifth round, it's because Lamar Jackson or Patrick Mahomes fell to the fifth round. Yes. Something. Yeah, exactly. I get that. And I respect that. Um, I do, however, think the comparison of the, the Browns and the, and the Cardinals situations, I mean, it's valid, but also must take into account the different personalities and mindsets that uh, inhabit these players. Uh, you know, we got Baker Mayfield, who, you know, we know he's got the ego, he's got the ego. Uh, and then suddenly he blows up. And he's like the star of football almost. And uh, he's on every commercial. Um, you know, he's talking a big game. And he comes out and maybe he, he, he it all kind of went too big for him and he exploded. And that's what it seemed like. Um, we don't know. I don't know these people. But, uh, you know, I don't even know Kyler Murray half the time is on a team because I see no ads with him. I see no interviews with him. He is yeah. a quiet person, it seems like. Um uh, and I'm just doing a lot of assuming here, which is never a good thing to do. But, um, <laughs> you know, I like to play around with the imagination. And um, I just think with Kyler Murray and Hopkins, who's two, they, they seem like two two people who, I mean, mainly with Hopkins, with like his work ethic and stuff, I just imagine everyone to kind of be hunkering down and, and, and working on trying to get this thing working more. And I imagine things will think you're going to get surprised by Kyla Murray. And well, hey, like I said, I did rank him high. Oh, yeah, and true. I, would, I would be fine with being surprised by it. But if I'm going for the bus that I also want to steer people clear of, you know, watch out for the where these people are getting drafted. You know, right. watch yeah. out if you in. Yeah, so that's why Kyla Murray is my bus quarterback. Let, let me ask you a question. Um, how low would what would be the earliest round you'd take Kyla Murray if he fell from his fifth round place? Um, probably like, it depends on how I constructed my roster. Yeah. I would, I would want, um, at least, so I'd say probably around seven just because I would want three, uh, three wide receivers and three running backs before I would even consider a quarterback, a quarterback that you're unsure about. I get, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So yes, I would agree with that. Seven round, take Kyle Murray. <laughs> yeah. I know it's only a two, two, two round drop, but just, you know, I think that his fifth round grade right now is about where he's going to finish right. at the end of the season. So you're drafting him at his, at his ceiling, you know? Yeah. There's a potential, there's a, there's a, there's a path I make. I could see myself taking where maybe I end up taking Hopkins, you know? Yeah. And uh, I would maybe take Kyler Murray when I had a chance just to get that cool little stack with those two players. Um, yeah. Um, well, and this is also different from Dynasty because I, I like taking a young quarterback in Dynasty because you don't have to year, worry about that for, you know, a couple of years unless an injury or something happens, you know. And why not get a, a, a young dual threat quarterback? 
not worry about for five, ten years. Yep. All right, so who's your bust quarterback? Well, here's the deal. I, I looked on this list, and I was trying to find a bust that made me excited. And, you know, I'm looking at these quarterbacks, and all the starters, I could see them kind of, um, you know, doing doing fine. And But the one quarterback I kept hovering over that always kind of spooks me, scared me, was Tyrod Taylor for the San Diego Chargers. And I don't know why. I don't feel... You know, I feel bad for having such a negative view of him, but he's he's the last couple times we saw him play it didn't seem all that inspiring. Mm. And he's just mm. become the, you know, the journeyman quarterback. He might be, you know, fine, but I, I don't know. I'm just I'm just cautious of him and that's all it is really is just a you know is is he is he gonna be good? I don't know. I don't know. This one's just yeah. a feeling. Yeah. yeah, I mean, to be fair, I don't think a lot of us are drafting Tyrod in our in our start in our uh, our redraft leagues. Um, right. I would understand like if you're in a two quarterback league and all the quarterbacks are taken and each team has you know three quarterbacks on roster, you probably have to draft Tyrod. And but yeah, I mean, I don't think he's going to be the starter there in San Diego long. I or San Diego, wow, Los Angeles. <laughs> I told you it's going to take a while. Yeah, that one still gets me because they're still the San Diego Chargers to me. Uh, and yeah, but yeah, okay, I can I agree mean, with that. That yeah, you know, I'm starting to think that maybe the fact that I feel so low on Tyrod Taylor, maybe I should draft him with that <laughs> last pick. You just talked yourself into Ty- your bust. I might do it. You know, I don't know. I mean, he's, he's, it's all. I mean, it's all just. I'm just picking at random sometimes. Um, all right, so my bust running back is, you know, he was drafted high in the NFL draft, and he's going in the third round in your fantasy drafts. And whenever you look at his stats, he had a good year last year to an extent. But my bust is Leonard Fournette. And last year he had over a 1,000 yards rushing. He caught 75 passes out of the backfield, which wasn't a – you know, whenever I looked up that that stat, I had to look it up again, and because I'm like, there's no way that he caught 76 passes. There's just no way. And but the thing is, the Jaguars declined his option, so he's not he's going to be a free agent after the year. Um, it wouldn't be surprise me if they found a way to trade him this year, or trade for another back and just bury him on the depth chart. And one of the main reasons why I put him as my bust is they added Chris Thompson in the, in the off season. And one thing Chris Thompson does so good is catch the ball in the backfield. You know, he's, he's a great third, third down back. He did it. So he was so relevant in Washington whenever he would be healthy. Um, and so that's going to eat away a lot of those 76 reception out of the backfield for Leonard Fournette. And he only for a big bruising back, like he is, you know, because if you watch Leonard Fournette highlights, like from LSU, he's a big, fast back. He only put in three touchdowns last year with his with his 1,100 yards. So I'm not taking the third round grade on him right now. I'm I, I'm steering clear from him. Oh no, and I mean I agree with everything because he's also my bust too. Oh, okay, I didn't know that actually. Yeah, I wanted to surprise you, but um, yeah, I just think you know I would not be confident in the pick if I had to like end up with him as a top running back for my team. I just, I, it seems like things have shifted down there for the relationship between him and the team. I, they don't seem to be going forward anymore. And I don't see why, you know, why would you want to put your full effort into such a demanding position if you're done, you know, with the team? Um, does that mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah, like you said, they may try to find a way to bury him or just play someone else because he may be ineffective. I don't know. I'm just nervous about that whole situation. These are the things to take into account. Well, just like whenever a coaching staff or an organization doesn't like you or doesn't, you know, them not picking up his option is kind of like, you know, why not just trade him? If he gets traded, then he probably won't be a bust to me because if he gets, if a team goes out and trades for him, then, you know, he should be, that assumes that that team has faith in him. But it just seems like the Jaguars don't anymore. We don't know what happened, but it just seems like they have both soured. Yeah, something happened to where they took away all his guarantees on his contract. So, oh, is that what they did? Yeah, so he, <laughs> or at least, so 
like he's only playing for his base salary right now. He's not getting any of his incentives or anything like that. Right. Yeah. It just yeah. It seems like maybe it wasn't a perfect relationship. Uh... I think a lot of that was Tom Coughlin too. Uh, yeah. If you hear a lot of the players from the Jacksonville organization, they just did not like him. Yeah, he's like one of those old uh, football old. minds, and things have changed. Oh yeah, that whole thing. If you're not five minutes early to his meetings, you're late. Right. Yeah, treating them like children, basically. Yep. Um, These are all grown adults. They can, you know. <laughs> I mean, there is yeah. some some level of uh, consistency and da -da, what's the word I want? I won't think about it for too long. Whatever. Um, yeah, I get it, but you got to find a good balance between it. You can't be a dictator, like you know. Yeah. Um. All right. So my bus wide receiver is a by the time the season starts he will be 30 years old he's going in the third round he played most season injured um that's adam thielen he only caught for 400 yards last year he did have six touchdowns but now you don't have digs anymore the gary kubiak is the oc and he likes he's a running running offensive coordinator which is what they like to do and uh kirk cousins you know, he's done it okay with Kirk Cousins for the last couple of years because he's, I think, because he's had stuff on digs. And now that Thielen's the lone man out there coming off an injury riddled season, I'm not taking him in the third round. I, yeah. I agree with that. I mean, you just convinced me to put him as a bust on my list. I mean, I'm not, he's not on my bust on this list. But <laughs> okay. I, 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 I will miss steer clear from him because, yeah, he's got the, the illusion of, you know, he's been consistent for the most part, but. It seems like he's been on a downswing these past, you know, few 16-game seasons. We'll see, though. But, yeah. Um, my my, my whiteout bust is a – it's not so much – it's definitely not a – he's not a bust due to his talent. It's more just about situation. Uh, and it's, it goes into my quarterback bust, which is Keenan Allen. I, he's, I've been just nervous about him because Keenan Allen has this name of him that when you see him available – when you're drafting, you go, oh, Keenan Allen, that's a top name. You know, you, you, you'll feel consistent. You feel good when you see him on your starting lineup. So it's deceptive in that way. But I just am cautious of the situation and the, who's going to be sleeping. Talk about Taylor. Can he, can he be a consistent enough back to get the ball to Keenan Allen? Um, if he can, he'll, he'll, he won't be a bust. But I'm just concerned about that situation. And, um, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just studying. I'm being, I'm being cautious of him when I see him on the list. Like, I want someone I'm a little bit more confident in, in the situation, not him as a person. But um, so it's just a cautious bust. But um, keep an eye on that whole situation though, because if it changes any way, I mean, yeah, take him. I don't know. So I could not disagree with you on this one anymore, because Keenan Allen is like at least top three best route, route runner in the league right now. Um, he he makes the quarterbacks and the other players around him better. I mean, you have Mike Williams on one side who's like 6'5", and then you have Keenan Allen who can juke anybody out of their shoes and get open. I mean, I think that with Keenan Allen running a curl route or a slant route or a post route, you know, I think somebody like – Tyrod Taylor or Justin Herbert can easily hit him open, you know? Mm -hmm. I I mean, I understand where you're coming from. I'm not going to yeah, yeah. completely disagree with you because that quarterback situation is scary, but I think I think Keenan Allen is quarterback proof. You know what I mean? I, I, yeah, I could agree with I mean, I'm not going to disagree with that. Um, this is definitely not uh, I call a 100% bust. This is not me. I could not ever play Keenan Allen busting. It's too good for that. I'm just, it's a, yeah, it's like a red, it's a yellow, yellow tape around, you know, like, oh, just be yeah, um, I get it. I mean, I, I forgot to look where he's going in drafts right now, but, um, that makes sense. I mean, I talked about, uh, what's Kyler Murray getting drafted at his ceiling and Keenan Allen is getting drafted at round four, pick nine. Round four, pick nine. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, that could be a ceiling and that, but he could also, he has a lot of potential to, to outdo that, you know? Oh yeah. And you know, but, I'm sitting here saying I'm cautious of the situation, and, but it could end up being a very good situation and, and I could be wrong. I, 
and uh, in that case, fourth round is a solid place to get him. You know, it's, um, <laughs> But I mean, now that you say, now that I looked up his ADP and I'm like, oh, he's getting drafted in the fourth round. I'm like, yeah, I could see easily to where he ends as, you know, I could see a situation where he finished in the top 10 as wide receivers and I could finish, see where he finishes like 25. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just, every mock I've done, I, I end up being able to draft him and I just go, nah, let me look down a bit. And there's always someone else. And like, oh, I like that that situation better. Okay. Yeah, so you're you're taking the the chance of a higher ceiling over possibly just getting somebody at their baseline. Right. And and getting him because it's like, you know, uh, a big name that makes you feel good that you got a good player on that in that slot, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, that that can that's a that's a that's a thing to watch out for in fantasy is to not feel so bad when you don't have like the big names cuz I mean, it seems like it's always like a surprise player that ends up winning someone a championship yeah yeah um all right so my bus tight end is uh rob gronkowski oh, i you jerk i cannot believe that he's coming back in the league and people are going crazy he's like i looked up his adp on one app today and it was in the sixth round i looked it up on another one it's in the 12th now i based this uh this uh list off of what i'm assuming was you know i did my first research off of uh i am not taking um rob gronkowski in the sixth round he's gonna be he's been a year out of football he even his last year in football he looked like a shell of his former self he he caught only for 600 yards and only three touchdowns i mean he's so touchdown dependent that three touchdowns i think i had him that year i hate him now (laughs) he he, hate from your heart sir he has no business being a 95 overall in madden you know yeah i don't think i think that's a bit uh (laughs) crazy uh he seems like maybe he should come in as an 85 or something but um or you know what based off what i'm about to say 95 sounds about right. Do you do, oh, sir? yeah. Do you have some? Uh, are you gonna? Uh, oh, okay. wait, wait. I have one more thing. Yes, I have one more thing to add. The Bucks tight end room is so crowded with Cameron Brayton, OJ Howard, and Arians doesn't even use his tight ends. I honestly feel that bringing in Rob Gronkowski is just a publicity stunt. Now yeah, I'm done. A, a publicity stunt for success. I mean, <laughs> he, he, Tom Brady has influence, and uh, he came over and he's like, Hey, yo, go get Gronk. I need him. But here's the thing with Gronk. He is the smartest player probably because he took a year off just to sit down and smoke weed probably and heal his body. He's coming (laughs) back with weed power. And yeah, that last year was bad, but he was also breaking his body. His body was broken. That's why he retired. He he had so many injuries constantly. He took a a year off and did nothing but nap and smoke weed. And he's coming back. And no wonder he's a 95. If every player took a year off, every other season would be great. And Gronk is going to be old Gronk. You'll see. So I, so players going around Gronk right now, would you rather have Gronkowski or Mike Gusecki? Gronk. Would you rather have Gronkowski or Hayden Hurst? That's the one where um, – that's a tougher one because I'm also high on Hayden Hurst, but uh, Gronk. Would you rather have Gronk or Noah Fant? Well, that's another uh, – well, I mean Gronk. Wow, would you? Have, so I'm assuming Gronk or TJ Hawkinson. You'd rather have Gronk. Gronk. Uh, if we did a new tight end list today, it'd be Gronk number one. <laughs> you just like saying Gronk, I think. I do Gronk, but also everything I said, <laughs> I do believe in it. Uh, Gronk for the. He's gonna. Remember when Gronk was good? Yeah, I do. Do you remember? Don't you want that back? Yes, I do. So, but... so wish for it and hope for it, and it may become real. And then we get just... Gronk back, thirty points a game. <laughs> that we'll game. see. It's if Arians' happen. offense can show me that he can support a tight end, because he didn't do it last year with the Bucks, and he didn't do it his entire year with Arizona. Would you like to know why? Why? Because they didn't have Gronk. <laughs> I'm going to pull that and make that a uh, a sting for the show. Hey, I'm happy to uh, uh, supply any sort of stings that you would like. All right, so who's your tight end bust? Gronk. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I just had to. Um you know what's funny is I just realized I'm just crapping on that San Diego Los Angeles Charger because I had Henry <laughs> as my tight end. I feel so bad. I don't think 
<laughs> what is this? I gotta I gotta search these feelings I have when I look at any Charger players because it's uh, just it's Eckler or bust for you. Yeah, I think I'm I don't know I'm so high on Eckler. He he took all the high feelings. Um, uh, it is Henry, and again, it's I mean I'm not gonna sit here and repeat the exact same reasons for Tyrod Taylor and Keenan Allen. I guess I have a. Uh, issue with the Chargers offense I'm going to search myself and figure out what this is and maybe I'm maybe the uh, maybe 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 I'm misidentifying the feeling and it's actually like oh these players are gonna explode I don't know I'll have to figure that out and I'll update everyone but for so, now Henry is my bust tight end so Hunter Henry um I guess the only reason why I would probably agree with you on that other than the quarterback play being sketchy is uh He's he's been injured, you know. He got injured for a while last year, and I think he was injured the year before. But whenever he's on the field, he is good. But that was with Philip Rivers, so we'll see how we can do it with Tyrod Taylor. I think if I I think that they're gonna try to stick with Taylor as long as they can for the fans, even if we you know if there's fans in the stands and whatnot. But uh, yeah. um, I think that Herbert's we're, we'll see Herbert by the end of the year. Yeah, I would hope for that. Just for I want to see that I want to see how he plays. But um, uh, you know, out of these. San Diego busts that I'm sharing today. I, I if I think about it, I feel like Henry may have the most potential out of the three, just because the tight end seems to be like a solid go-to play for the tight end who's struggling. You know, you know, you throw to the tight end. You know, get you a safety net kind of thing. That could work. That could end up being a situation where he just gets. You know, I don't know. That's just you, a thought. You know, if Herbert is uh the answer for for uh los angeles chargers then their offense is looking pretty good in my opinion because then that you know they have allen and williams and then they have eckler and henry you know they're a quarterback away from giving eh, i'm gonna say this with a grain of salt the chiefs a run for their money i mean yeah uh you get herbert in there and all my, my view on all these three players change yeah um but, I feel so bad for Tyrod Taylor. I'm sorry, Tyrod Taylor. <laughs> I, 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 I hope you're. I know you're probably a, a decent man and quarterback. I, I may, I'm going to work on myself and try to find a way to like you as a player. Well, Tyrod, if you do have a chance to listen to the show, you can always at zip at Scott Zipperman on Twitter. Yeah. Um, if you come in and tell me that you think you're going to be a good player, I'll switch everyone. Um, but that's going to wrap up our show. Uh, you can find me at Dirt Shingles on instagram and twitter um you can find our youtube page at uh or not at but just type in dirt shingle barrier the fantasy football burrito you should be able to find it that way um send us fan questions send us reviews rate our podcast on apple listen on spotify you know help us out a little bit we would really appreciate it and i really hope you guys enjoy that song that was made for us our good friend jamil uh we texted him i think on a Friday asking if he could make us a song. He had a shell of a song like the next day, and then we had the full intro on a Wednesday. So yeah, he, he, he makes music like a magician. He, check out his music on Spotify. He has a whole album on there. I actually downloaded it on Spotify and then I went and bought it on Apple Music because I, you know, he's a friend and I loved it so much. I I jam out to it in my car. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's a I I I'll listen to it first thing in the morning and it wakes you up. It, it's a good uh, batch of songs. Um, every song on it's great, and I, I I haven't bought it. I should go buy it. That's cool that you bought it. Yeah, um, you know the only reason why he really wrote us a, an intro is because I messaged you and I was like, hey, do you think J Mill would mind if we use one of his already made songs as our intro? And you said I was thinking about messaging him and asking if he'd write us a whole new one, and he did. I, I feel bad sometimes. You don't know how many times I ask him, hey, can you write a song for this? Can you write a song for this? And he does it every time. That's a good friend right there. Like I said, yeah. he's a good friend of ours. Friend, we're, Even though he, he's not a big football fan, where I'm going to call him a friend of the show. Um, so, yeah, you guys, if yeah. you know, you're listening, you made it this far into our podcast and you're on Spotify, just do yourself a favor and type in J-E-I-M-I-L-L and just listen to his album. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Uh, the, 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 there's so many good songs. I can't think of the names right now, but I could pick any one and it would be a banger for you. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's it for our show. You guys have a great week. Bye. You like fantasy. You like football. So come check out something neat.